This is In Boot Camp, Episode 10, Beginning Note, on Sunday, March 24th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Ramperson. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB10. Hey there, how's it going today? It's good, how about you? Uh, it's a real good day, it's time for another episode of In Boot Camp. Yes, Episode 10. Uh, yeah. We're coming up on the actual halfway mark here soon. It's, uh, I know, it's pretty... yeah. I, I'm looking forward to this for weeks. Yeah, pretty exciting here. You know, I heard that, um, that a couple of weeks ago that you started learning Firebase, which is sort of a taste test of having some server-side technology. But now you've actually dived into Node and yep, uh... the server side. So tell me, tell me about how that's going. Like, tell me all about Node. Well... Node is a runtime environment that runs JavaScript on pretty much anywhere, and so it's not just trapped in the browser anymore, and it is the thing that almost everyone is switching over to. And one of our first little things on the Saturday morning was to, hey, everyone, right now, Google, who uses Node.js? And then it actually ends up being quite a lot of people. And and so, for uh, example, who might some of those organizations be? Netflix. Netflix is one of the biggest users and stuff and earliest adopters. And um, Netflix loves the stuff uh, like Walmart, Uber, um, NASA even uses a lot of their stuff, um, which actually we got derailed when we started talking about NASA. I guess NASA started pushing up a bunch of code from the 60s. And he said that we should all find NASA's GitHub and view it. And um, I probably should do that. But it does sound interesting. Well, but what do you think it even looks like? Uh, either Fortran or C. Yeah. Yeah. Or assembly directly. Well, I don't want to see that. Oh, I would love to see that. That sounds great. But let's focus on Node for now. So, so tell me the steps of like having to learn that in class. Because, you know, you've been doing all your work in a browser for the last, I don't know, 10 weeks. You haven't really had to install much more than Chrome and an editor. But now you need to have an editor and node to actually run node code so tell me how that goes uh seamlessly uh so vs code if you do control tick you can just open up a console right there uh it opens up wherever you have the directory where you opened up the thing and um as long as you had node installed like the pre-work said to do you know 11 weeks ago it would have been seamless but the caveat is you actually had to do the pre-work that happened 10 weeks ago or 11 weeks ago and nobody did it and it kind of messed everything up a little bit for the class yeah yeah i can i can imagine um and so when you installed node did you also install npm yes and uh so no we uh we started with how how like my python class we just played around the shell a little bit um you know add numbers you can make little function things well same thing you can do with the console when you open up the thing yes when you open up chrome and so, uh, not, not, nothing new, nothing to do that with. Um, and then we started, uh, you know, making little app things. So we can, in Node, you can take in, like, you know how you do, like, Node and then index.js or whatever you, like, run JS, and then you can pass in arguments and stuff. So we learned how to capture that, um, and we just, like, our, we had a little exercise where we made a calculator where it was, like, you passed in an operator, so like I want to add, subtract, divide, or multiply, and then you passed in two numbers, um, and then it just returned out. So like, you got to search somewhere. I know you're gonna say, "Oh, that's child's play." I was doing that when I was eleven, but uh, uh it was after eleven. But like, I will it came say, out in 2010. Yeah, uh, I will say that actually, uh, I'm surprised you started by capturing arguments like that. Many people would say that that is a more advanced use case for Node. This was one of our first things. Well, well, well the first thing we did was greet. So you're going to do, um, you're going to pass in one argument, your name, and then like, hello, Matthew. Yeah. But even just capturing arguments like that from the command line, that is not something typically you see in Node tutorials or in Node curriculums. It's just a more of an advanced feature because most people don't do scripting with Node like that, you know, out of the box. So it's hmm. it's a good thing to learn for sure. And then um and then we started right towards the end. So I know that you said this calculator thing, but we they we gave it they gave us a half hour to do this and some people didn't get it and um it just our class period was moving slow on Saturday. Also a lot of people are kinda of half caring on Saturdays, it seems. Um 
yeah um but then we had a um just a little lecture about node and stuff and then it was mostly just hacking away and then we did a little thing at the end where we were exporting stuff so we had a one file just had an object in it and then we had to export the module thing to run it in our run js thing um and then we went over how you can just kind of just enter through you know npm init whatever starting a new project just give it a name and yeah yeah so i looked at some of your code for that and so you have here a module.exports and so you, so you've learned what the exports does there the module.exports yep um you can do the whole file you can do just uh, certain parts of it you yep. um i know you already mocked the um naming structure i used yeah that's a little little bit rough there um and we also talked about stealing other people's code yep. um and so like a lot of our little exercises have little stretch goals and stuff and one of them was like so you could add colors so just get the node module for coloring your console and then so you can have like you know this is green this is red and it, it actually makes it a little cooler it does make it a lot cooler uh I I love playing with the colors in the in the console like that. It's so much fun. Yeah, and then um, he, our professor encourages us to use GitHub for everything. Um, and then he kind of gave us a little thing that we should um not upload our node modules when we start uploading everything to GitHub. And why is that something to avoid? Well, I guess it's a way to make it huge and to you know, let's say you had to like. You know, five hundred dependencies and everything else in a big project. I can I can imagine that it's pretty big, and also doesn't update. Because if you, I mean, that's why you have the package or dependency, whatever thing. Like, there's other ways to get this stuff. Yep, exactly. So the package.json is the spec of dependencies that you need, which is a single file, very small. It's just a JSON file, yeah. versus potentially hundreds, if not thousands, of individual packages that are pulled in and stored in node modules specifically. So it, it's actually interesting, though, because in the old days, many, many years ago, before people kind of started using Git a lot, people didn't have all these conventions and know all these things. And so many projects did store all dependencies with the project all the time. And then we just ended with another quick little mini lecture thing. It The professor breaks up our slideshows and he doesn't like talking for more than like five minutes at a time. That's fair. I mean, it's also good to keep you guys engaged. Yeah. Um. So, so what do you think you're going to be doing with Node? Like, what do you think the like near term goal is? Like, well, normally on Saturday they kind of give you a preview of the week, but they didn't actually talk about what we're going to be doing. Um, that much. I expect um, that you'll be learning how to, you know, make a little Node server soon, and then after that, probably learning Express a little bit, and then a little bit after that, probably making an API of your own. Yeah. Uh, I do know Express will be covered in this course. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, won't know till Tuesday. Right. But that's okay. Yes, because it's, it's not today's problem. That's right. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, we, we do have some follow-up uh, from the interview day, uh, which was a, what, what that seems like a month ago now to not me. Not really, though. It was basically a week ago. Is that right? A week ago. Yep. Oh, my um, gosh. So short version, they are moving forward with other candidates. Short version, huh? Uh, which is which is fine because you know you didn't do very well oh, on the absolutely. coding part. Totally okay. Uh, and, and you have recognized that the, the experience was well worth it. I had never had a real job interview before. I, when I got the interview at the post office, it was in the cafeteria. They asked me just super generic questions and just said hi here now you're, you're a letter carrier now get out of here so we can do the next guy like it was like a higher like they tried yeah. to interview as many people yep. i had a minute instead of you know a half hour of talking and so what i what i want to say uh before we get into the feedback or the follow-up is you know compared to most of your peers in your boot camp right now many of them will have had something similar to your experience uh, having a real interview, most likely before. Like, m many people are probably working in some way already. All of them are. Or, or, but or, uh, I will say that most of them will have never done what you just did, which is to go through a technical interview, 
which is some of the most complicated and absurd nonsense the industry has to offer. Yeah. So, um, totally yeah. worth it. So, so what is what was the response like from from the company? I mean, other than proceeding with others, but what was that um, like? Was it just a flat out rejection, or just like, no, you're oh, not no, they, hired? They, they um, they said thanks for coming because I'm I'm guessing that's pretty generic. They say that to everyone. Um, but they also said that uh, yeah, you're not there yet, but you knew that, and please stay in touch, and we'd love to follow up with you. Well, that's great. So. I don't know if they send that to everyone just to make you feel better because I did not feel bad after this rejection thing. Like I knew it was coming. They did worded it very nicely, very flowery, um, said you'd make a great developer someday. Um, but no, oh, I actually uh, kind of felt inspired by it instead of rejected by it because, yeah. you know, I'm going to I'm going to keep their contacts. Yep, that's great. I think that that is something the boot camp can't teach you. It, it it can't teach uh, resilience and persistence. And so having those traits can certainly help you continue your boot camp journey and then beyond boot camp. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so you wanted to write uh, them a thank you letter. So tell me about how you wrote the thank you letter back to them. Oh, I tried to keep it as short as possible because I'm sure they have a lot of people to go for. And I just thanked them for their time and because they fed us i mean it's not like there was just an interview in there they gave us breakfast they gave us lunch it was an amazing um for all the people there they must have spent a quite a bit of money on uh all Food. the yeah 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 well in, in, in addition i i can also imagine that they probably spent a lot of money in just hosting the event um you know the night before and and you know having all the people there in office and you know so on so it was a non trivial amount of effort um but basically i thank them i thank them for inviting me um told them that i understand what i need to do now and that i will see you when i know more great that's good yeah i think that's that's a very positive way to look at what happened there you know you you can imagine that many others especially those that you know in your boot camp right now would not look at this experience as positively yeah and the day of the coding interview and stuff somebody walked out after five minutes like they just said nope i can't do this and then they just they didn't stick around for the interview experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i figured out pretty quick that i wasn't gonna be able to pass the coding thing but i still stuck around like a tick like this the little parasite sucking which is, blood off which the company is a very good thing to do yes i sucked all the experience i could out of it yep and that is what most people don't do in those situations so good work mm -hmm. So, uh, also this week, um, we finally did our presentations that we've been working on. Uh, you for finished our projects. your group project one? Group project one was this week. There was some sabotage at the last minute, but we still had a somewhat that, viewable. That, that makes it sound like there were nefarious intentions abound. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, it's like somebody made a whole bunch of changes to a web page told me they just changed one page and I blindly pushed it to the master branch to find out that no they tampered with all pages this navigation bar and doubled some tags and didn't know how to copy and paste and never opened it locally on their own machine before pushing now what have I told you about blindly accepting PRs and not pulling them down locally Look, we had like 12 minutes before class started and you and... can do all of those things in five minutes it's fine yeah, but didn't and pushed and um. And so, what did you learn? That uh, twice now, twice now in this project, I have been burned by uh, group members and burned by myself not checking. Yeah. See, I should never, should always never trust your group members. You should trust them, but verify. Uh, so so um, what I have kind of a list here of things I want to go through with you on the group project one. Um, so for the audience that's uh, very intently listening to this episode, can you remind us what your project was on again? Um, it was a sports fan page for the Minnesota Wild hockey team. I see. Okay, so let's let's talk about people management. In, in software engineering, you know, you are a developer, you are coding day to day, but that's not all you do in many jobs. In many, in many actual things you do day to day, in, in addition to coding, you're going to meetings, you're talking with others, you're 
uh, you know, fulfilling issues, pull requests, uh, you name it. So it's not just typing on a keyboard to write code. It's other work too. So how did you handle other people's contributions? Like, how did you, like, how was that? Like, how did, how did you set those expectations? I set expectations that were never met because there's GitHub issues. There's GitHub, uh, there's a Kanban board. There's so many ways to keep track of stuff. It was never open. I created issues. I did all these things and there's an assigned button. I assigned features to people. Nobody opened it. And so it was all done verbally. Like there was no, nobody would participate in the using the, that. I mean, I, I made a Slack workspace. It was never once used after the first night. I tried. I tried to keep that. But no, we pretty much only worked on the project by talking to the person next to you and saying, go home, do this, and then push up next time you're here. Um, and two people never opened up the repo as far as I could tell. They never pushed code. They never did anything. And so what, what, did, what did you do with contributors that contributed very little? Nothing. I'm hoping the TAs saw that when they looked at the project. I, I, hope, I hope so, too. Uh, I get the feeling that they might not have. Yeah, I, I, I also get that feeling. Um, okay, um, so in addition to those who did contribute, though, like you mentioned earlier that you were burned a couple of times by just kind of blindly accepting PRs. So in your opinion, like what contributions, like not specific contributions, but what kind of things were useful going into the project? And what 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 contributions weren't so useful? Like so, when people put code up, like what was good and what was bad? Oh, mass majority of it was great. It was just how do I put this? Pretty much everything the other two people did were fantastic. Uh, they would. I'm pretty sure they always opened it up locally and checked what they were adding. Like when they would add a feature, they'd check it before moving it to the branch instead of putting it on the master branch to check it. They. The players page got all done by itself. The uh, We made a Ticketmaster API call thing to get the upcoming events for the wild and stuff. A lot of these people were self-starters and could just do the stuff. And I never looked at it. I never saw the development cycle for the schedule page. The guy just took care of it, didn't ask questions, just took it and ran with it. That's great. Um, so so the, there's a pretty clear spectrum here. So there's those who did no work. And those who did. Yeah. You didn't ask. I mean, I, I wasn't even sure if it was going to get done. It was just magically in the repo. Yep. And uh, like, we were like, Tyler, can you handle this? Yeah. And then just done. Yep. And uh, I like that. <laughs> so there, there is a sense of autonomy when you're doing development, right? Like you have the choice on how to build the thing you're responsible for. Mm -hmm. But it's also good to keep in mind that you are intended to communicate with the rest of your team. Even if you can handle it. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, let's talk about code management. So I've heard that you have had a few Git conflicts in your merges. So tell me about how merge conflicts went. Our project that was two weeks long had 35 merges uh, back to the master. And only two of them or three of them had super conflicts. And it was because they were... The first time, the guy was 14 behind the master. Like, he, I mean, he got the starter files and never get pulled. Um, and one of them was just completely grisly. Like, like it shouldn't have even been tried to... We shouldn't even have tried to fix the merger. We should have just delete his branch and make him fix it. But... Oh, also, we used it all in the browsers. Get, uh, so you know how on GitHub pages... Or GitHub, there is a resolve button, and you can use their... Uh, you know, in-browser text editor. Yeah. That's basically me and the other guy were just gathering around my little laptop and we were trying to figure out what was what and ended up duplicating some random brackets and some other stuff and then having to fix it locally after the merge. Because just because GitHub says there's no longer a conflict doesn't mean that it's, it's fixed. Right. Because um, we had some stray brackets that caused some trouble but wasn't a conflict. Right. And this is the first time I've used GitHub in this way, because um, we've been using GitHub since day one, but you're only working with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like a good way to back up your code or work on multiple machines and stuff, because I don't use my laptop at school. I, my laptop goes is open three times a week, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, but, yeah. 
So, and so when you were showing me some of your uh, code throughout the process, I don't know about recently, but you know, sort of in the first week, I noticed that you had um, you know quite a few repeated body tags and head tags, and uh, you know, code quality might not have been the highest in every uh, commit. And I would fix them, and they would revert back because I don't think they are pulling down again. Yeah. Like, so, the final project had the, a jumbotron navigation bar thing in the head. <laughs> like still, still, like I mean, on final day, I fixed it, and they like, keep on putting it back. Yeah, you 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 only put you don't put any styling or content in the head. Um. It was pretty much day one stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I, I get the impression that was like a merge conflict thing. like, But a repeated conflict. Like, I yeah. mean, it wasn't like it was just one bad branch. This was multiple dead bad branches. Like yeah. Our, our tree <laughs> that, was kind of unhealthy. Of it, a little bit, for sure. Uh, and the other thing I would say is I, uh, what I'll comment on as far as the code goes is your look and feel of your end product was kind of mediocre <laughs> yeah like you think we could have polished it a little bit more well so i i uh last week when we talked um i made a joke about bootstrapping and you thought i was talking about bootstrap the twitter library twitter bootstrap, yeah, twitter uh, but, bootstrap. but i wasn't making a joke about that which made me think that you guys didn't consider bootstrap as a way to kind of style your system did you end up using bootstrap or was it something else <laughs> Well, so for extra points, we could have made it mobile responsive, and I um, basically told the guy, like, yeah, so on, on especially this, this player's page was pretty much just HTML, like, there was no fancy calls or API calls or stuff, and so the one guy was supposed to take care of it. I'm like, yeah, you know, if it's on mobile, if it's on a tablet or smaller, make it one column and use the everything else, and I got containers are hard and stuff. And they basically said that, yeah, we're 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 not we're I'm gonna take care of it, but I'm not actually gonna do it. Because our nav bar, our jumbotron, we've used a lot of bootstrap elements and like bootstrap cards, but not so much for styling, just for structure stuff. Sure. That's okay. I mean, as long as you use bootstrap somehow, yeah, uh, you 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 and your team will have to work on uh the aesthetic portion of your skill set. Yes. Speaking of aesthetic, let's talk about your presentation. Uh, presenting is something that you do regularly when you're doing software engineering because you make all this stuff and then you have to go talk about it. So tell me about how your presentation went. At six o'clock, I walk into a room and a guy who doesn't know what Google Slides is and loves Apple's keynote thing because he's a Mac fanboy um, basically said, all right, you guys, I want you to talk about some slides. And then he got quiet for like 20 minutes and then class started and we ran out in the hallway real quick and then figured out who was going to say what. And I saw the slideshow for the first time in my life. Cool. After class, it started. Nice. It would have been nice if we had like, you know, you know, everyone had their a Gmail account and everyone was using, you know, Google Docs as slideshows. But nope, 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 nope. I asked him. He said no. And the group members weren't pushing it. I, I was re so. Plenty of times, uh, two people disagree on stuff, but there's six of us in this group. I was hoping, like, the other group members would be like, you know, Matt's got a valid point. I would like to see the slideshow, too. Nope. Nope. Uh, like, no, no, just let, let, let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it in keynote. Our presentation wasn't very good. So what, what, what had to be in your presentation? I guess I was never clear on that totally. We weren't. Um... Honestly, after the slideshow, I just went up there and uh, we just went to GitHub pages and I just demoed the site real quick. Oh, and then I, okay. And did a handoff. So a pre we, we were allowed a 10 minutes. Uh, I think we actually only ended up using eight. Um, the slideshow was a few and then us showing the feature at functionality of the site took a little bit. And um, yeah, it just six people doing a presentation that nobody's prepared for. We did pretty good, and when you think about it that way, I, 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 that is exactly how I'm thinking about it. That brings to mind when I was in a journalism class, no less, uh, when all my team members did not prepare for the slideshow and didn't have any cited sources, whereas my sections did. 
Ah, the good old days. But keep in mind, this guy's one thing that he was supposed to do was this presentation, was the slideshow. Like, that was what he was supposed to contribute. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But slightly Um, bitter, slightly bitter. Slightly bitter. Before we get to your final grade, I want to talk about some of the other projects. So surely you were there watching other people's. Yes, there were five of them. So five groups. Five groups. Okay. And so what were some of the other topics people picked? Oh, some people were uh, did like a restaurant finder because there is a Good Eats API something or other. Uh, there's a way to get reviews for local things. And they actually did some really cool stuff. Of course, it's demos and sometimes things break. Um, a guy was making a maps call thing. And I guess the, you weren't allowed to present on your own machine. So you had to go to GitHub pages on the other thing, and he accidentally hit block uh, location instead of allow and something, something. And then like, he was just trying to say, like, you know, a map should be popping up right here and something, something. And then in the question and comment section after, because people could ask questions about your app at the end, they're like, you know, that happened because you hit block instead of allow. And then he's like, oh, why didn't you chime up during the presentation? Very nice. There's like a study app one where it was like um, there's like a static page about like how to study and how much time to allow. And then there was a you could set a timer like. um, Just. I want to study for 20 minutes, blah, 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 do that. Um, There was another one that would um, if you you enter into like a book you wanted to read or something and then you would. see if there was a movie made about it or if there was multiple movies made about the book or if there was a movie you liked, you could see if there was a um a book about the movie and then it would have it on amazon or ebay or whatever you wanted to search for like i think they did both amazon and ebay that's cool yeah so you could you know buy it uh it would have been really nice if they had a way to you know not a referral link on amazon what is it called when you get a money kickback affiliate thing? link Affi- yeah. yeah yep yeah. I don't know if they did that, but that would have been a way to actually make revenue. That would have been, that actually would be pretty clever. So in in your opinion, do you feel like your project your project was, you know, sort of below or average or above average? Uh I would say slightly below average. Mostly because of how it looked. Yeah. Function functionality wise, we had it down. Uh um, right. our chat uh, the chat room app worked flawlessly. Um the schedule page work there uh our hard-coded embedded youtube links worked great worked great because um, literally one of the sites was just a timer right like for studying yeah. um but it looked amazing it had hover overs it had all these other things uh they definitely spent a lot of time in ui and color choices yep and to be honest, it was the way something looks sets the tone. Um, it does. When it, something looks amazing, even if it doesn't do, do anything or it just has a timer, it looked so good. Yeah, no, that is that is true. Welcome to the Apo syndrome. Um, okay, so you mentioned your final grade. What final grade did you get? Got an A. You got an A. I, we got an A. Well, congratulations on getting an A. That is uh, an accomplishment for a group project. I have no idea if the group members got A's, but I, I just don't care. I'm done with them. Until Next group time. project two. When when half is overlapping with uh, another team. The professor pulled me aside in the hallway along with a few other people and basically said that my final grade would not reflect the project if I could show that I was doing a lot of stuff. And when you look at the thing, yeah, I had 3,000 some lines in because I had to put stuff back in all the time because things were getting removed and all these other things. and other people weren't and so i'm hoping he actually went in and looked instead of just giving everyone a's yeah it it is um you know as i as i read more about boot camps and i think about my own university courses one of the hardest things is keeping people to keep up and yeah. it's not it's not something that these organizations were built to do these orgs are built for throughput and saying okay well you didn't do so well now do it again but just try harder and practice more nobody does that nobody does that in university nobody does that in boot camp you don't get to have time to continue trying and what that means is your team members can just be left behind which is a terrible thing yeah 
So I forked the after the project's over with. Uh, I have my own fork of it now. She can't just delete the code. The owner of the repo, um, and so I'm just gonna work on it on my own. And I'm wondering if these people are ever gonna touch it again. I would guess not. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I know it wasn't the best project, but I am proud of it. I'm proud of the role I played in it. Um, I don't know. A- ask me a week from now, and I'll tell you it's probably a piece of crap. But as of right now, I'm still pretty happy with it. And that is the life of an engineer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I believe you have one final thing here to mention. Is that right? Oh yeah, a little shout out. Um. Uh. We here live in Minnesota, and we have a local Fox section. We have our Fox Nine Morning News. And my other, every other Saturday professor got to be on our local news that is for central Minnesota and western Wisconsin. So, um, and they also got a little blog post on their thing. And there is a link in the show notes where you can see Chris, my professor, and uh, a former boot camper. Cool. Uh, So uh, I went to this page earlier and I was looking for the actual, like, Video? Nope, nope, it's, it's Fox, you don't get it. Yeah, or even if not video, like some additional words, nope, and there was nothing. Nope, 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 it's a link to the University of Minnesota's page. So what I did instead is I scrolled down and looked at these cute puppies. There are lots of puppies, yeah. yeah um, very cute. But yeah, no, that is literally what I got. And so who that. is that professor? What was his name again? Uh, Chris uh, Woolcott. Woolcott. Yeah, okay, well, it's good. good I call know. him Chris. Good, good to know you, Chris Wolcott. Great. <laughs> but it, it, when, when somebody makes local news that you know, I mean, like, I know a guy who got in the Wall Street Journal. Like, it, it's kind of fun to know somebody who's semi-famous. Semi, semi-famous, yes, yes, totally. Uh, this guy, he made it onto the local news. He's a superstar <laughs> in my world. Yes, he, he certainly is. <laughs> like, Brandon's going to be a speaker at Open Source North. He is a... I mean, that's just, it's cool when you make it in the big world. Well, speaking of Open Source North, I heard you're going to Open Source North. I sure am, May 22nd. Yeah, so I, I think that's, was that a Wednesday? Is that right? Wednesday, yes. Yeah, so it's, um, Open Source North is uh, one of our, the best uh, local, non, like, siloed conferences. So, like, it's not an AWS conf, it's not a Google conf, it's not a Midwest JS conf. It is a general purpose, learn a bunch of different things conference. And meet a bunch of people. Meet a bunch of people. There's some uh, good activities for mingling and getting to know some local businesses, even big businesses. Um, and, and so, like, overall, it's a really great opportunity. I would guess that in your boot camp, uh, you're the only one going. Yes, there is a paywall to go. There's and, a paywall, um, but it's a very inexpensive paywall relative to most conferences. Yes, and also there's only 700 some slots. So yeah, so last year they said that the uh, sell through rate was three weeks long. So it took three weeks to sell about 700 tickets. This, this year, time was a little different. Three days. Yeah, yeah. Oof, that was a uh, good thing we got in as soon as we could. Yeah, it's because uh, somebody didn't give their email to the thing. I, I love signing up for. Uh, email notifications and then complaining that i never get back i am still waiting for old trappers beef jerky to send me an email when their um deli sticks that i love so much are back in stock and yeah they, they they might not get back to you on that but they might sell your email address for 0.0002 cents yeah yeah uh okay well this has been fun uh where can we find you on the internet Oh, you can find me at MatthewPetrol.com, and you can also find me on the People's page of the Nexus's website. Great. And how's your blog coming along? Uh, didn't work. I see. Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at RyanWire, and of course on my website, RyanRampersad.com, where I have not blogged in many years and will continue to not blog, but that's why I have Twitter. You can also leave comments for us at reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv and you can support us on patreon.com slash the nexus tv where you no longer have to participate in the fringe paywall you can just listen to the fringe as you should be able to uh so uh, any plans for next week matt um to learn about node and to enjoy the wonderful spring weather that is a good plan it is finally almost nice out it's only going to be getting nicer i think yes it will 
Um, and we, we have like 65 next week. So I was hoping to do some grilling this weekend, but my backyard is still a swamp. That can happen. Well, have a good one. Take care. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.